but getting to Dr. Wallach now, he'll be with us till five after next hour. I know he's busy on the road. Uh, we've been trying to get him, and he, he's able to come on today. So thank you, Dr. Wallach, for joining us. I'm going to get you back in the near future for a full hour via Skype or back in studio again. It was amazing the two times you visited us here in studio. But, man, just the way you were breaking it down, I mean, I should get into your background. He's published numerous books on dietary deficiencies, conducts approximately 300 lectures annually, sold over 40 million copies of the lecture Dead Doctors Don't Lie, born and raised in Missouri, walked attended the University of Missouri and received his bachelor's degree in science of agriculture. And then, of course, he became a veterinarian for 30 years, and then he got other medical degrees. But he just kept learning, trying to keep animals alive at huge animal research facilities, zoos. He's a famous zoological guy, that it was deficiencies that was killing most of them and causing all sorts of degenerative diseases. Well, no kidding. That's why they're saying scurvy's making a comeback across the West, the BBC reporting, because people aren't getting vitamin C or their guts are so unhealthy from gluten, they're not absorbing it. That came out in the New York Times last week. Oh, top scientists, you're getting most cancer because your gut's dead. Oh, that came out, I mean, just admitting everything that he pioneered. I'm not kissing his butt. This guy was pioneering this 30 years ago. I learned about him 20 years ago, so enough of that. Dr. Wallach, great to have you back with us. Let's just focus in on the statin conspiracy today, sir. Okay, well, thank you so much, Alex. It's always good to be with you and look forward to getting back to Austin. <laughs> but um, just the thing on the statin drugs, it actually started in 1901 when the German Navy went to a guy by the name of um, Wilhelm Norman. He was a chemist in Berlin. And uh, they went to him and said, look, we need a smokeless synthetic lubricant um, for German uh, submarine diesel engines. And by 1904, he had accomplished that. And make a long story short, after the First World War was over, they didn't need them anymore. So they sold that to patent to a British soap manufacturing company. They made soap out of it, and they couldn't sell it because everybody's making their own soap. So in the 1940s, they sold it to Procter & Gamble in the United States, and they couldn't sell it as soap either. So they decided to use it as a cooking shortening. And they were having trouble selling it in a can because Grandma liked her lard and cream and butter and eggs. And there have been generations uh, of people's families using lard and butter and cream and eggs for cooking. And nobody really got into this product. Well, um, there's a guy by the name of Hansel Keys who's a medical doctor on the staff of the medical school at, um, uh, in Minnesota and Minneapolis. And he was on the board of Procter & Gamble. He was also on the board of uh, the American Heart Association. So he brokered a deal by which Procter & Gamble gave the American Heart Association in 1952 $1.7 million, which is kind of chump change today, but back then it was a lot of money. And so they gave the American Heart Association $1.7 million to endorse this product called Crisco as a better, a healthier way to cook rather than using lard and cream and butter. There was never any science to prove that. They just took the money, the American Heart Association just took the money and uh, endorsed Crisco is a healthier way to cook. Well, it turns out uh, um, Procter & Gamble was having a real trouble selling this, uh, and so uh, they invented another sales campaign called the Mediterranean Diet. There was no science behind that. The average lifespan of, of Greeks and Italians is only 62. But they took the Isle of Crete, which had uh, people in their 80s still working out in the fields, and they said, oh, well, this is what we want to do. And they looked at olive oil and so forth, and they began to use olive oil and cooking oils and salad dressings and things. And we began to get heart disease because they were pushing that. Well, at that moment, what happened uh, was that um, the, the um, Mediterranean diet was magic, and people just followed that and went on it. But the pharmaceutical company jumped in and wanted it on it. They said, oh, we're going to give you a product called statin drugs that will lower cholesterol and help everybody prevent heart disease. Well, it turns out they've killed a billion people, Alex, between Europe um, Asia, United States, South America, Central America, and, and Africa, they have caused cardiovascular disease in all these places with this Crisco uh, and olive oil and coconut oil. And this was uh, all because of these statin drugs. It's a multi-trillion dollar business. And not only did they cause cardiovascular disease, coronary artery disease with Crisco, they had a spinoff. They had a whole bunch of unintended consequences, including uh, low T, low testosterone, uh, ED, erectile dysfunction, menopause in women at age um, 30 because um, testosterone, estrogen, progesterone, and um, adrenal hormones are what we call steroid hormones, and they're 95% by weight cholesterol. So going on a cholesterol-restricted diet, eating egg beaters and egg white omelets, using margarine instead of butter, using cooking oils and, and 
uh, Crisco, instead of lard and butter and cream, they created a huge monster of a problem. Now, if it wasn't bad enough that we got low T, erectile dysfunction, menopause at age 30, and uh, adrenal exhaustion, we got Alzheimer's disease. Alzheimer's disease is a direct cause of statin drugs. Statin drugs causes Alzheimer's disease. It's not due to aluminum. It's not due to genetics. It is a direct cause, is directly caused by the use of statin drugs. In fact, in February of 2012, the um, uh, FDA actually sent out a notice to all licensed doctors saying, stop writing prescriptions for statin drugs. They listed 10 of them. Um, Lipitor, Zocor, Mevacor, Levostatin, ones like that. And by the way, my dad was just reading yeah. medical journals in the late 80s and would never get up and cuss, but I remember him getting up from the couch and throwing a medical journal down going, I can't believe they're pushing these statins, and I've got to tell my mother not to be on them. And, and then literally, I know people who go on them, and they're gone in a year. They are just, it's a lobotomy. Now, explain, doctor, why it does this, because... It's simple. Okay. Your brain is almost all cholesterol. It's mostly water. And so you take a drug that eats cholesterol or blocks it. I mean, this is incredible. This is like Drano for the brain. Explain it to people medically, Dr. Wallach. Okay, well, your brain is, you, uh, you're very good, Alex. You've been doing your research. I'm very proud of you, sir. Very good. The um, a brain is 75% white matter, which is almost 100% cholesterol. And when, you're, when the cholesterol goes away in your brain, when the white matter goes away in your brain, the myelin is called, when the myelin goes away in the brain, these naked nerve fibers all tangle up, which is the classic feature of Alzheimer's disease. All the um, uh, nerve fibers in the brain short circuit, and you can't remember anything, you can't do simple math, you can't do anything. You put your keys in the refrigerator, life is a mess, you go downhill very rapidly. It doesn't matter if you're eight years old. I remember when... The Pediatric Association were trying to get kids eight years old taking statin drugs, and I blocked that one. Oh, I saw uh, Fox I News. That. I have the clip saying they want to put it in the water. Exactly. No, no, no. we got to stop that. But um, what happens is when you take a statin drug, remember, the FDA came out and wrote and sent an email to every doctor in America that said stop prescribing statin drugs in February of 2012, and not one doctor forwarded it to other patients. They just kept on doing it. It's a multi-trillion dollar business. And so at any rate, what happens is... When you drop your blood sugar down below 140, you cannot maintain the myelin in your brain. You have to have your, your blood um, cholesterol, excuse me, when you have your blood cholesterol below 140, you cannot maintain the um, myelin in the brain. You need to have your, your cholesterol level at about 250 is where you need to be. Well, let me expand on this. My uncle was in a motorcycle accident when he was 16, and he had epilepsy you know, from the brain damage. He, he's still there. He just has motor problems and would have grand mal seizures and things. And they mm -hmm. took him off most of the medication about a, 15 years ago and said, you must eat natural, healthy fats. And they gave him a list of things, the same thing you say, and because I guess the doctor really cared about him, and it really helped him, and it cut it back about 80%. So explain to us what the doctors even knew 15, 16 years ago about the right type of fats to stop having epilepsy. I mean, this is incredible. Well, they knew this. This is what makes this criminal. This is a criminal thing. Now, Alex... You're the man to help me get this information out because of your wonderful audience. You have to remember this statin drug thing and directing people to stay away from good fats. Uh, I always say a stick of butter a day keeps the doctor away. Ten eggs a day keeps the doctor away. And by reducing cholesterol below 140 and creating Alzheimer's disease, low T, um, things like um, erectile dysfunction, menopause, Alzheimer's disease, all these things are caused by getting your blood cl uh, cholesterol below 140, and it's done with statin drugs and diet. It caused a 1 billion deaths worldwide in the industrialized world. And, of course, uh, the, I guess if there's any good news, there's no um, uh, limit, no, of sta no statutory limits on murder. That's right. So Stay there. I want to hear how we turn guys. this around, Dr. Wallach, when we come back, because... People now finally know. They go, oh, I've heard statins eat your brain. So at least, you know, 10 years ago, nobody knew this. So now it's getting out there. So it looks like we're making headway, like with glyphosates or fluoride. What do we do? And can it be reversed or slowed down once you've been brain damaged by the statins? Stay with us. Roger Stone joins us coming up in about 15 minutes to break down huge 2016 news. Got a bunch of clips to go through your phone calls. Allen, New Jersey, Jeremy, Wes, John, Dave, and many others. I'll get to you if you keep holding, not call back. I'm also going to, later in the week, uh, spend an hour or two with victims of communism or people that support it. Those folks never call. 
because no one that's lived under it supports it. Only spoiled, rotten Americans and others living in the lap of luxury are being promised all these freebies support it. So that's coming up as well. Uh, but getting back to Dr. Joel Wallach, doctor, I also want to plug these big events you've got coming up too. So let's spend some time on that here in a moment. Uh, and also, we also sell your book at InfoWarsStore.com uh, dealing with uh, the claim that it's all genetics now uh, versus epigenetics. I want to talk about that next time you come on. But getting into how do we reverse this? How do we educate people? If somebody's been on statins, what do they do? Uh, how do we counter this? Okay, well, education is exactly right, Alex. Uh, two books will do that. Uh and a couple of CDs, uh, one book of the original Dead Doctors Don't Lie, which came out, I think, it was 1997. And, by the way, the, uh, the audio cassette tape and the CD was sold over $350 million, not $50 million, $350 million. I was just going off an old bio. <laughs> and um, the um, a, a wonderful piece is a double-blind randomized study, 10 years old. It, it's 10 years and uh, 5,000 people, 2,500 on the study program and 2,500 on the dummy program, and reduced the risk of Alzheimer's disease over a 10-year period in 5,000 people by 78%. It was just a very minimal supplement program in a certain diet, and uh, it was actually a high-fat um, uh, diet, and the supplement program was just a couple of nutrients. And in animals with all 90 essential nutrients and a proper high-fat diet, it's 100% preventable. And I have reversed... Uh, I don't know, literally hundreds of people who've been diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease um, with a very simple nutritional program and a, a dietary change. You've got to make dietary changes. Somebody's going to have to be there to actually, you know, kind of a caregiver to make sure these people remember to take their supplements. But it's totally reversible. It's totally preventable. And uh, because it, it's a simple nutritional deficiency disease. Ted's and, dad, um, who recently died, as you know, and I'm allowed to tell the story, even though it's very sad, they had him on a uh, blood thinner, even though he never had a stroke. He basically had scurvy because he wasn't getting vitamin C. He got on Beyond Tangy Tangerine and went from not knowing who he was to knowing who he was and coming out of it. And the medical doctor basically told his mom, you take him off that. He's got too much vitamin K in his blood. And then he didn't know who he was again in a couple months. I mean, and, and, and he said, hey, it's my mom, my dad. They make their decisions. And she worshiped the, the doctor. And uh, he just sat there and watched his dad go right back into it. Amazing story. Yeah, it's a terrible thing. The power that doctors have over people, especially older people, the older generation, uh, they revered doctors more than they re revered God, and that's why they're in trouble. And uh, basically, again, uh, Alzheimer's disease is a physician-caused disease. Uh, every doctor should be charged with a felony every time they prescribe the statin drugs. It's a felony. It should be a felony to prescribe. Because they know drug. it literally eats your brain. That's correct. It's, a, it's one of those things where it's predictable as gravity. You're going to get Alzheimer's disease, low T, ED, menopause at age 30, adrenal exhaustion. And, and now Alzheimer's they even disease. admit that low-fat diets have fried everybody. It's the bad synthetic trans fats, right, doctor? What are the good fats? Well, the good fats are butter, uh, cholesterol, things like uh, cream, butter, um, animal fat that's not burnt. Is imperative to maintain brain health and to maintain that. So you want raw fat food. is the best thing. That's correct. So, I mean, fat. to be honest, it's very good to say then eat like beef sushi where you just barely even heat it on a rock or something. I and mean, that's what you need. Exactly. Uh, raw beef is good. Just don't burn it because if you burn, if you burn the beef fat or you burn pork fat or you burn chicken skin or you fry your eggs, it turns into, as you say, trans fats, heterocycling means a colonized. And, and that's absolutely proven to give you colon cancer, you name it. Absolutely. But then I distract us with the bad fat and say all fat's good. Folks, we're based on it. Homo sapiens got big because of our meat diet when we changed over to it. It's why our Thank brains got big. It, it's why we mutated like this. And people say, wait a minute, that's evolution. It's God's plan, folks. We'll be back in 70 seconds. I know people that are gibbering mental patients now after a few years on statins. Totally different people. Their family go, no, they're like a kid now. And, I mean, managers of companies, super sharp people, once a man, twice a child, and you know the statins are eating their brain. And they get skinny. They get gaunt. They're like zombies. You add to this this vegetarian diet bull, Every vegetarian I know, they're either super skinny or they're fat. They look super tired. They're like dumb. And I know you can eat enough beans and enough stuff and get what you need. It's, I'm not knocking you. And there's a lot of dirty stuff about meat nowadays. I'm not judging you. 
I, I just, the, the globalists want you on a vegetarian diet for a reason. It makes you very servile. It's known. Dr. Wallach, we're going to be back for a full hour very, very soon. Um, I know you got some big events coming up. Where do people find out about some of these big speaking events you're about to do in the next few days? Okay. Um, yeah, I'm here in North Carolina um, uh, today and tomorrow. Uh, I can give those out if you want. Uh, the one today is at the um, Hilton Charlotte, Charlotte University place. place. Exactly. Okay, and that's in Charlotte, North Carolina. And that's then you've got some other big events coming up. It's at 7 p.m. And then tomorrow night, it's at the Spring Hill Suites by Marriott in, um, on Johnson Road in Charlotte, 7 p.m. And then uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, we have events up in uh, San Francisco. And so you might uh, have people up in that area contact KSCO in Santa Cruz. Uh, KSCO, they'll have uh, the event located. I apologize, I don't have those. We've got it on screen for folks. Uh, and, and I guess you that, that you are, URL is longevity.com, guys. All right, fantastic. Am I right though that that something that, that 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 something's going on with vegetarians? Oh yeah. Well, see, you cannot get what you need. You need ninety cents of nutrients, and vegetarians miss about sixty of them when they go vegetarian. Uh, they need to supplement. They could do it if they supplemented, but they believe they can get everything they need just by eating well, and that's uh, that's absolutely absolutely wrong. When you look at the National Geographic, Alex, they came out um, oh about ten years ago with the top twenty longevity cultures. They're all heavy meat eaters. There's no vegetarians in the top 20 longevity cultures on earth. They're all, he all heavy meat eaters. They're all third world. None of them have any medical uh, doctors or health insurance or emergency services or clinics or hospitals. Yet they have 40 times 100 year olds we do. They have 100 per 250 of their population. We only have 100 year old per 10,000. And so heavy meat eaters are the ones who live the longest they're and healthiest. Well, I mean, meat's a drug. I can be sick and go eat a big ribeye and like I'm feel better in hours. I mean, if it's, oh, if it's, if it's rare, it's got to be bloody. It's got to be bloody. Yeah, medium rare. I just take every day. I eat 10 eggs every day. It gives you sex hormones like you can't believe. Yahoo. Well, there's no doubt that I mean, studies old, show like larger CC brain sizes and the craniums <laughs> growing over the thousands of years as people went from agrarian to meat eaters. I mean, it, it's true. Meat has turbocharged us and we're basically turning into predators. Yeah, exactly. Of course, we're we're turning into uh, meat for predators. Pre uh, um, predators. If you become a vegetarian, you do not want to be a vegetarian without supplement. You can do it successfully if you supplement. We have the 90 cents of nutrients. We we hope that all people who are really um, dyed in the wool vegetarians and vegans come to Longevity. We will give you a supplement program that will make it work for you. Without this supplement program, you're in trouble. Absolutely, and find that whole program at InfoWarsHealth.com, InfoWarsTeam.com. And Dr. Wallet, let's get you up in the next few weeks for a full hour via Skype uh, to get into the 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 you know the missing nutrients, to get more into the statins, to get into all this medicalized tyranny. They want forced inoculations now. I mean, it's getting crazy. Okay, well, thank you so much, Alex. And again, the book uh, "Dead Doctors Don't Lie" and the book uh, uh, "Epigenetics: The Death of the Genetic Disease Transmission." Uh, we love you. And we're going to work along your side, and between you and me, we'll make things happen. And by the way, uh, we've got reviews on that, a five-star review for the package of books we've got discounted, Dead Doctors Don't Lie and others at InfoWarsLife.com, InfoWarsStore.com has it all right there. Dr. Wallach, thank you so much for the time today. Well, God bless you, sir. Thank you for the hospitality as usual. We love your audience, and we're there for you uh, forever. You're a revolutionary. God bless you. Yep.